record. All right, I'm recording to the cloud, whatever that means. And then, hold on, let me let me make sure I'm gonna be able to access this. I think this is my cloud. Record to the cloud, Zoom. Zoom, paid subscribers, allows you to record meeting where the file can then be downloaded. Okay, yeah, that's what I want to do because I don't have space on my computer right now. Okay, I'm going to, um, oh, I think I'm supposed to say, is everybody okay with this being recorded? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, all right, cool. Well, yeah, you guys get started. Feel free to speak candidly, like it's whatever, since it's being edited. So I'm just gonna mute and get out of here. <laughs> Quick question, sure. Jackie. Is the uh, is the meeting going to end promptly at three? Um, I don't think so. No, this is a this is like a business Zoom. So I'll 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 come back just to make sure, like when we're okay. getting close to three, just to make sure. Okay. But yeah, okay. Should be cool. okay. 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 All right. Okay. Have fun. Thank you. Thanks, Jackie. Hi, um, my name is Widmark, um, head of Chop Up Radio the host of Chop Up Radio. And I am here today sitting with none other than, please introduce yourself. Ah, well, hi, I don't think I need much introduction. My name is Grace King, I'm mm -hmm. down to earth, so I'm gonna keep it real. I'm a <laughs> designer, I am a mom, just uh -huh. a grandmother. So I have so many wonderful ex years of experience and I'm just excited about life. And wow. about the cause, and I I work for several different businesses. Uh huh. For myself, and we'll get to that later on. But um, I'm just a free spirited, kind, compassionate person. And That's right. I'm excited to speak to you today. Awesome. Yes. Where are you? Are you, are you located in? Or where are you located now? I'm located in the U.S. Virgin Islands. In Which island? St. Croix. St. Croix. Croix. Yes. Okay. Yes. It's beautiful over there. Oh, it's beautiful. Everything is, um, the beaches are so much uh -huh. peaceful and calm and just right. breathtaking. Breathtaking is the word that I'm looking for. Yes. Is that the breeze blowing on your flower or that's a, the breeze from the ocean? Oh, yeah. It's the ocean. <laughs> it's, my, it's my fan because it's really <laughs> I have AC, so it's okay. in my in my place right now where I am. Yeah, so okay. I understand a fan because I'm Filipino, <laughs> and uh, there was hardly any AC. Okay, I'm, I'm from the island too, so okay. the, when, the, when the fan is blowing hot air and it's hot, yeah. I understand. <laughs> okay, I'm is down, so I may just put it up if it's not too distracting. It's gonna. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh but man. Yeah. So yeah, um to the islands? To what's the that? Islands. Have you ever been to the um St. Croix? You no, I no, I have I have not, but okay. I mean I have a lot of uh Caribbean friends uh growing up in New York. Um, you know, the Caribbean community, it's wow. a mass in culture as far as wherever you go to school. Um yeah, and it, 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 I pretty much you pretty much grow up with everybody. Um, right. Caribbean, um, African descent, um, Latin descent, Asian descent. It's 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 something that you're privy to knowing about through. Okay. And if you have that one good friend, you know, food. You exchange food and culture, right. and that's how culture. that's how you get to know people. So you're not gonna ask me what everybody asks me from the U.S., right? And what is that? They ask me. Are there any virgins in the Virgin Islands? No, I don't, I don't, I, that wasn't even in my mind. Okay, great, 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 yes, thank you. <laughs> there is alcohol, right? <laughs> there is, there is, uh, a lot of people indulge in alcohol. I might have a glass of wine one or two times, but I'm not a <laughs> But that's part of, that's, isn't that part of it, These, the familiarity with, with you know introduction of things it's that's the difference with us and 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 i believe in the right, caribbean yeah. i mean the culture we have a lot right. of especially right. the youths they're into drinking and 
smoking responsibly weed. though right hopefully yes responsibly yes. and smoking and stuff like that but um all in all it's just what makes us unique as a u.s caribbean island which is right. yeah okay so let's get right into it because i know um people that are gonna uh that are listening they're gonna want to know what's going on and um let's talk about as far as what you represent and what you're doing now with Anatha is, am I pronouncing it right? Anatha, yeah. So, nice. Um, exactly what would you like to know, the background or do you want me to stop? Uh, let's let's, let's get a little think? background. Yeah, let's get a little background on you first. And um, I know that you said that your career path was by chance. What chance is that, would that be in I, kind of curtailing? I would say chance, but I would attribute that chance to a divine power which is mm -hmm. good because um, growing up, my background, my dad is a pastor. So I'm oh, a wow. pastor's kid. And so um, I grew up in several different islands. I was originally born in a small island called Antigua, which we okay. say is very beautiful and peaceful. But because my dad was a, a missionary, we traveled right. a lot. So, uh, my culture, we've been to so many different islands. We've been to, um, we lived in Bar uh, and Trinidad for a couple of years. We lived okay. in Bar. We, we travel so much like ministering. And I think that a lot of my influence was from the cultures, the different cultures, the islands, and just being a, a unique person because of my background. Okay. Now this, this chance of that you're talking about as far as some, some things that is by chance. Are we talking about what you're doing now or what you were doing as, as fashion designing? Was that the first thing that you got into? Right, right. What happened is um, at the age of five, um, I was introduced to a doll because I was traveling so much. My dad wasn't the richest person, but we didn't have that much. And they gave us dolls to play with, of course. And the girls were pretty much without clothes. So I would go to my neighbor and get he at the time he was a seamstress. I would run over and oh. get scrap cloths to make clothes for my girls. And okay. I didn't know that today I would be a fashion designer, but that triggered something in me to love to create. And I'm not and fashion designer, but I'm a creative designer. So I put a lot of things together as far as plays and um, just that's why I have my nonprofit right now. Nice. So this, the, I remember you telling me that this started around the age of five. Yeah, this, right? this creative, this creative, um, you know, insight. And I could say creative genius because right. I to take that you know I'm not bragging because I'm very down to earth but to take anything that I touch and turn it into gold I'm not okay. you know, just speaking of what God has blessed me with he's blessed me with a, a tremendous talent so after high school I, okay, I was a bit bored and I graduated from high school at the age of 16 so my right. Like, would you like to go, um, what would you like to do? Do you want to take some um, additional classes? I said, no, I think I'm going to learn to sew. So, okay. to, to make clothes and design clothes, of course. And I said to myself, well, the first month into my sewing class, I said to myself, I learned enough, right? I didn't want to go back. And the reason right. I didn't want to go back is, I wasn't looking at it as a career. I was looking at it, okay, well, maybe I could just sew for myself and, you know, just, just not as a career. Because, right. um, you know, I loved it, but I didn't think that it was something that was worthy, you know, of oh, my, okay. and my, my, because I was very brilliant and I still am very brilliant. So I was like, okay, maybe I just want to do it as a hobby. Yeah. Okay, okay. Now, where the, you, you mentioned something to me um, a couple of times ago that when we were talking about Tampa, Florida, right? Is that where you continued um, fashion designing? Yeah, yeah. so um, I'm, I'm going to tell you the story. I'm so excited talking about my life. Yeah, please. You know, that's, this is <laughs> so great. After I did the class, I was like, okay, I got this. I don't need to learn anything. At that time, I was sewing for everybody in the church. I was making 
skirts and I was doing everything with one month of class. And okay. then, <laughs> then we moved again. So we moved to um, our next island. And then when we moved to the other island, I got a job because I was finished with high school. And I got a job at the bank. And um, I was, I worked there for a couple of years. Okay. And um, they sent me off, they gave, the bank gave me a scholarship. So I okay. went to, I went to um, Liberty University in Lynchburg, Virginia. And that's when I was exposed to the US because you know, I grew up in the Caribbean islands. Right, right. First, my first trip to the US and I went as to college. Now, when I got there, nobody told me that in the semester, after the semester, that my scholarship fund would run out. The bank closed down on me. So I did not have the monies because at the time the tuition was really expensive and I did not have the money. I was doing right. management because I didn't decide as yet that this is what I wanted to do. So I was doing right. management because I love business. Everything about business, it's me. So I right. decided you know, two things could happen. I could go back home and go back and work with probably at the next bank or I could just let chance take over. This is where right. chance came right in, right? So first semester was good. The second semester, I had to, the funds didn't come in, so I had to move out of the school where I was in the dorm and move to apartment. Now, I grew up very naive, and, and I grew up in the church, so we were very, very sheltered. You know, I think that a, a lot of what I've been through has led me to where I am today. So if you don't mind, I would like to tell you what happened before. Okay, I just a quick, just a, I have a quick question. Sure. So this, this, this is all, this is all leading up. So you're in school. I just want to get a quick summary for people. So you're, mm -hmm. you're in school, um, you're doing uh, designing and sewing. Is that what no, I mean? at the time I was doing business. You're doing business, okay. Yeah, so, because like I said, I didn't want the stigma that came along with just being a seamstress, you know, because okay. something that, you know, it wasn't like, okay, you have a big degree or you're, you know, so it was something I was kind of looked down on, even though I really okay. was, yeah. Okay, so you're in, you're in school for business and mm -hmm. the you had a scholarship? Yes. Right, but the, um, the, the bank that was supporting the scholarship had closed down right. so but you wanted to you wanted to stay and further yeah. yourself yeah. right um and then you you said um you did you continue college no at that point i had to drop out so okay okay I dropped out and i started to work um, i was introduced to the first abusive relationship in fact my first relationship real relationship that i had at the age uh -huh. of and um, it was very abusive. Okay. Um, and this is the main. Yeah. Um, this is this is why we're exactly talking, and Correct. this is what you wanted to um, kind of elaborate on, and uh, not just about you. There's beautiful things about the come up. You know what I exactly. mean? And 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 what leads to where you're at now. But we want people to understand that this is something that's very prominent, and it happens still. It's been happening for a long time, and it could get deadly sometimes. Yeah. Um, and it's and it's swept under the rug. Um, yeah. So please, um, if right. you could so, yeah, talk I, about that. Thank you. I I married this guy, the abuser, and I have a new daughter. Her name, yes, she's twenty right now, and um, she's the one that gave me the grandchild the other day. So. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so he was very abusive because for me, that was the first relationship that I had. And I did not know what it is to have somebody slap me for no reason, you know, for, for somebody to take a knife to them, their, their hand and hold my hand and try to stab them with my hand. You know, I had to run for my life. In fact, I had to send my child back home to Antigua so my parents could look um, right. to her so she wouldn't be caught up in abuse. It got so bad that I tried to kill myself, right? Yeah. 
took a, a bunch of um, birth control tablets and I, I, they actually took me to the hospital and they pumped it out of me. But it, it, I, I couldn't believe that knowing my background, how sheltered I was, that I was in a situation where I had no control over. You know, going back home, it would be like, well, like she have a child and she come back and she didn't do anything. Thing, uh, all the girls that she had and who she thought she was or who she thought she would be, she's not of that. So I wanted to fix it. Being the type of person I was, I wanted to fix it. And um, she said, well, you know, let's move to, at that time it was, I was in Virginia. He said, let's move to Florida. And okay, okay. I, yeah, and I said, okay, well, let's see what happened when I moved to Florida. And when I moved to Florida, I said, okay, there was this college, which is the International Academy of Design and Technology. Right. It was in Tampa, Florida in 2002. And I moved there and I started to enroll in college. And while I was enrolling, uh, while I was attending college, the abuse continued so much that I would have so many different opportunities because I was so talented. He would he would stop me from going to the places that I wanted to go to develop myself, you know, because I already had the skill. I just wanted the degree to, to put behind my belt because my talent came from God. And so I just wanted to know that this is what I had. And it got so bad that, you know, it, it was, I couldn't deal with the abuse. We were driving and he would just shove me through the door because I look at a guy or because I look at, um, Maybe you're just not. looking at you're just looking at something. Just looking because at something. Maybe it's anything. Just a shirt that the guy ha had on because I'm a, a fashion diva. I love fashion. Of it would just be that, and I couldn't understand how he could not see my value and my worth because right. I held out so long to be with this one guy, you know. And um, for me, I, I, I went. I went to my professors and saying, listen, I am in an abusive situation and. I don't think I would be able to, to continue college. And my, one of my professors said to me, well, you know, in life, you have to make sacrifices. To me, I did sacrifice because- You already sacrificed. I yes. was sacrificing and I could, not, I could not live in a situation. I didn't see my parents going through that, you know? So right. it was like, I wasn't exposed to it. I didn't even know how to react. All I know that is I went down one day, I got the courage to go on my knees. I say, God, you've got to take me out of this because this is killing me, you know? It's also killing my productivity, my creativeness. And um, I, I just told him I was going down the road. I parked the car and I jumped on the Greyhound. I went, took the Greyhound to Orlando, Florida with my aunt. And um, I spent some time with her, and then I went back home to Antigua, where I reunited with my daughter. So and you've been you've been back since then. I've been back, and then I came to the Virgin Islands. Yeah. Okay. Okay. How long? How long was that relationship for? About um, two years. Two years. So it was really it was it was short, but it was short lived. It was short. Did, um, at, at what point did you feel, like you said, you, you, you mentioned the word naive, right? Um, at what point did you feel like something's wrong here? Was there a situation that you felt like something's wrong or you just kind of be like, oh, this is not, this is not right um, in a sense. But then again, you, you kept going with it. Not right. to say that you liked it. I'm not, that's not what I'm saying. Right. But you're kind of questioning like, I've never seen this before. You know, you know, so can you describe something like that where you might have felt like go back in time and feel like this oh, is yeah. something bad? From the first day that he slapped me. And I think that for me, somebody slapping me is like, and for no reason, because I wanted to go out with my friends in, that were in college at the time. Right. He wanted, he slapped me for that. And I was like, well, that was my eye opener because I, like I said, it was never something that happened in my family. And at that point I kept saying, well, if I pray hard enough, it's going to change. And it just grew worse and worse. And it was right. not that I gave up faith, but 
he wasn't worth me. He wasn't worth me because I had so much to offer, and he could not see, you know, he could not see me for who I am, you know, at that time, who I would evolve to be, which is who I am today, you know. And I, but I, in the same, the same, the same time, I am happy that you know everything worked out the way it did. That I had the courage to get up out the way, and you know, I didn't stay in it. Because there's a lot of girls and girls, I say girls because it starts young. And then there's also a lot of women, older women who stay in it yeah. because they don't know how to break out. And sometimes it could be worse, their situation and no one not knowing. There's women that doesn't get to leave the house. Yeah. They're, 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 uh, they're just locked up in their home. Like you know, they're not necessarily in chains, but the fact that it's become a, a scheduled movement it's like where are you going today what are you doing here this and that and to me also that's from the men's side of things i think that's something that a lot of these uh, men that were boys saw growing up maybe through their fathers or their uncles and they thought that that's something that's okay and then that's how you have to do things you know what i mean which is wrong and it's 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 absolutely absurd because it's it's just damage from both sides yeah Right. Um, you say you have, let's say you have a son or whatever the case may be. He sees that as being the norm and it continues on. And then if you, you know, your daughter, you didn't want that for your daughter. You don't want her seeing that, you right. know, that's why you had to send her out because you didn't want her feeling like that's something that she should be accepting whenever exactly. she got into something, exactly. you know what I mean? Right. Right. And I'm happy for you that you were able to break free, you know, and, and, yeah. and be who you, always have should should have been from jumpstart you know right. i hate to say that sometimes things happen um for certain reasons but they do they strengthen you up you know and then it leads to where you're at now because right. you're empowering other women right mm -hmm. and they have a mentor to turn to because when they've never had one before so right. speak on that which which um i really like what you're doing as far as anata right can you yeah so i um thanks for saying that because a lot of people are still so bound and they don't realize that they have the power to change the trajectory of their lives you know and um, it's all in you and it's believing in yourself so um fast forward after i went back to antigua i um went to i i i moved on to the u.s virgin islands where you know I stayed there, I worked at the bank, and then I met husband number two. <laughs> That's fine. That's great. So I could tell you the abuse has not just been for one husband. It has been um, husband number two, because husband number two was not very um, physical, but he used, he used a lot of things, you know, when I say verbal. Things verbally and he used a lot of material things to try oh, okay. to manipulate the, the um situation not only did he do that but he um i'm not speaking badly about him because he does have his good ways but okay. he he was just he didn't know my value or my worth you know it was as money was his um his tool to control me because he know that oh she's coming and she had this history and let me try to get her into like showing her I have this and I have that so therefore I could run around and I could cheat on her or I could I she could be she'd be okay with that because she has to settle for it you know and like I said I grew up in a home where I didn't see my father be unfaithful to my mother. So that and all was a form of abuse because I feel like if you're married and if you're in a committed relationship that you need to, uh, you know, that you need to respect um, the relationship enough to know that, hey, if I'm not doing something, if I'm verbally abusing this person, if I'm trying to control them, it, it they always have to be physical. You understand what I'm saying? I do. I do. I absolutely understand what you're saying. It's um, it's a very uh, it's it's just plain sad, yeah. um, because I've uh, I see that even when I go back to the Philippines, 
um, I have an upsetting uh, notion when I see my uncles and I say it, you know, yeah. they're just waiting to do nothing while the women in my family run around and do everything for them. Right. Um, it's a very second class citizen kind of act where it's so, it runs very deep and it becomes so normalized where the women watch the kids. That's just the thing. Um, the men are together in a table drinking all night, drinking all day. And I'm like, you know, I grew up different. I grew up in New York and I'm like, even though I've come back home, you know, I noticed that that's not the way, you know, I grew up with my mom also doing mostly of everything. My father got to sit around and that was abuse in itself right there too, mm -hmm. because, you know, there's a shared value in equating the weight, you right. know, and making sure it doesn't fall just on one person. Right. And, and I'm sure you feel, you felt that way through your experiences. Um, you know, it should be an equal value, you know, exactly. give and take kind of thing, you know, right. when it's yours, so it's you, your turn. Yeah. So yeah. if you're allowed to cheat, I am allowed to cheat too. <laughs> no, because <laughs> that was just a joke, but absolutely, I, absolutely, absolutely. If we respect each other, it should go both ways. You know, right. I'm not gonna sit there and put up with anything that is undermining me as a woman because I have the strength and capability to do anything that I put my mind to. And you know, that is what I've been holding on to. So I divorced him. You know, I just him with two children, so I had three children, and that relationship was not long. We lasted for like three years, and I had, so the total was three children that I had as a single mother trying to make it in, in life, and um, it was very sad to me because I felt so much to be heard. You know, I, I figured, I feel like I have a voice that I wanted to show through my fashion, through my personality. And it was just being stifled by every man that I met. So I held on to the man that I knew mostly that was the man above. Because of course my family came, they, they thought that I should be perfect and why did she do this or why did she you know, because of my background, why did she make choices like this? So I had to reevaluate my choices and accept that I did choose poorly, but it led me into something that is a mission that is bigger than myself. And it's called, right. Anata. it's a new, and Anata is just one of those missions that really, my, it, it, it stems from my second name. My, my name is Grace Anata King. Um, okay. We did a lot of well when I was in the when I was in Saint Thomas. I'm in Saint Croix now, Saint okay. Thomas Island. We um, did a couple fashion shows, and I found that a lot of the models were gravitating to me. They came to me and they were like, "Oh, we don't feel empowered. We feel like people are trying to take advantage of us and stuff." And being that I I felt like I've been through so much in my life, I said, "Okay, well let's." let's come up with something, let's, let's change things, let's be an advocate for, for our voices, you know, and I said to myself, well, what can we do to change things? We can bring awareness to this. So we developed Anata. Actually, um, when we talk about a name, my friend who, was, who is an attorney, he was very instrumental in the name. And he was like, why you don't use Anata? Anata is your second name. It sounds like an organization, Grace. His name is Anata. Yes, it's, it sounds, it sounds very <laughs> strong. So he was like, it sounds like an organization. So I laughed for at least a half an hour. I was just cracking up. Who would think that? Right. I'm trying to fast forward some things because I don't want to be, I don't want it to be a long overdraft. So, I said, I'm not a, let's look at the meaning. And we went through the dictionary, we Googled everything. We couldn't find a meaning for it. So I, I look at my 16 year old daughter who was, she, she was just in high school at the time. I said, hey, this is my name, find something. She came up with an acronym, a new approach to helping adolescents. And it just stuck on me that these young people need help. And if I'm going to be the instrument of change or the instrument of help, then I, I'm hoping that what I went through was worth 
it. And I right. feel like it was really worth it. Now that I can see things that are opening and everything that is like, you know, just the way that God is paving for me, right. get the fundings that I need to continue the mission. Meeting, meeting Jackie too as well. So I'm right, right. Much. Let you go ahead. Sorry. No, it's okay. Say what you got to say. I'm not. <laughs> trust me. It's 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 cool. Yeah. Um, this is you know you're actually my first um quote unquote sit down interview since February. Oh yay! So this is very big because oh, um yes. we usually used to do the interview in uh, well I'm in New York. It's in a, it's in an open air market. It's not an open air market, but an indoor market. And we had the booth inside. So, but I was very happy. I was like, it's about time. Uh, and thanks uh, to Jackie for this yes. too. Just real, just a really quick thing. But um, going back on what you're speaking on, right. As far as the, I'm going to touch base again on the domestic violence, because it's such a catapult to where you're at. Right. And then even though it's such um a bad thing to touch on. It's it's a good thing because, um, you know, life is never really over. No right. matter how you thought you saw yourself, there's a bigger, higher path for you that God wants. And you read, and you never really know that, you know right. what I mean? Because you just have to keep going and, and, yeah. and pushing through walls. Mm -hmm. And um, the main thing I wanted to touch on is the um, Kind of the way things are viewed in domestic violence especially for women and it makes me sad because it's like almost saying like well you shouldn't be dressing that way let's just say and that's in those kind of terminologies let's touch on rape right what were you wearing like does it does it have to be that for it to be not you know what i mean to be not okay or or in in any sense it's it's a it's such a it's a bad excuse for anything and to excuse the person for, 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 for doing it. Um, I was reading a, a, a fact too. Uh, I don't know if it's a law that's been passed in the US and it disgusted me. Uh, it was basically kind of like coddling the um, child abusers that um, if the child is, I believe, don't quote me on it, um, not older than 10 years old, it's considered okay Mm. Mm -hmm. So if, 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 <laughs> if the person, yeah. So if the person was, the, the child was 10 and the person was 20, it's okay. Wow. So that has a lot to do the, the, those are abuse, abuses all over and all around. Mm. And, um, yeah. And in your case, it just, it, it sucks, but I'm, I love it because it's a beautiful outcome and a beautiful, um, uh, thing that you're doing with Anatha, and um, what is the situation like in the island itself as far as, uh, let's just say, let's focus on where you're at right now with domestic violence. Yeah. Is, it, um, is it on the rise? Is it prominent? Very... Oh yeah, I mean, this is something that we deal with on a daily basis. You know, recently, we had a, um, a young lady that was killed by her boyfriend, you know, so it's ongoing. And for me, it, why I want to be an advocate for it is because if I could change or whisper something positive in a young woman's life or right. a young girl's life, it, it really helps to know that you have the support. You don't have to go through it. It's fair, especially with Corona. There are a lot of people that are depressed. And, you know, with domestic violence, you don't feel, the, okay, people don't come out and say, well, I am abused or I was abused. You never know until sometimes you see the newspaper where they're dead, you know? Right. You know because right. So the, the, the situation may be different. And, you know, to bring awareness is to put it through um, social media, stream it so that people could say, well, this is not acceptable. You know, I right. can't get out of this. I am an overcomer. I can, you know, I can change my life. I don't have to stay in a relationship that is abusive. And for me, that's been my message. You don't have to stay. And, you know, one of the things that really touched my heart personally is um, my, with my son, 
we um, moved off the island and we were living with my family in Florida and um, they were going through a lot of abuse and my son turned to why does why does such and such a person stay in the relationship? I don't want to call names. And she said, she should, she should just leave. And at that moment, I realized that not only did I empower myself, but I empowered my son to know that you don't treat women like that. You don't touch totally. do right. those things to them. So if we as women would rise up and rise to the occasion, and make our children, teach our children respect by respecting ourselves and not accepting certain treatment, then our world would change. You know, and yeah. I feel like we need to bring more awareness to domestic violence and even interfere, um, you know, just get into the school. Infiltrate, that's the word I'm looking for. Infiltrate the schools. Teach them more, not just on topics like um, math, English, but preventative measures. And that is one of the things why I'm absolutely happy that I met Jackie, because we're working on a project called Project 6. And this right. is a preventative measure so that we can find ways to grab them at the age that they are and shake them and say, you know what, we, there are things that you look for in abuser. And there are ways and steps that you can come out of it, but we're subtly changing it by giving them an outlet, by teaching them business, by strengthening them so they're not financially dependent on any Right, right. Because abuse is not just for, for um, women. Men abuse, um, women abuse men too. So, right. we have, so we have at least about 25 young people that we're working with right now. And, wow, um, we, okay. For her. Sorry, let me stop. <laughs> it's okay. Keep going. This is it's it's always don't ever feel like you're saying too much because what we're talking about, you don't know who's hearing it. Right. And it could just be that little piece of information mm -hmm. amongst everything we've been talking about that puts them over the hill yeah. and sends them to the path that, you know, of 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 letting go and, and being free. And you may not ever meet them again. Or you may never ever meet them, but you've yes. done your job. You know what I mean? So everything was worth it. So that, that little bit. So don't ever feel like, you know, you're, you're, you're saying too much. Right. And for me, for me, that is why I do business with intention. You right. Know, because, um, a lot of my focus could be on my designs and my fashion, because I would like to think that I'm very, believe that I'm very creative, but because I want to intentionally help to change the, the Virgin Islands. I am going to make this one of one of my areas where I am able to make an impact on the young people. So definitely. I love, I love the, I think that's part of the, um, let's just speak on the Corona virus and, and a lot of um, impoverished people um, that actually use getting out of the house, quote unquote, as time to be away from their abuser. Mm -hmm. so, with coronavirus, I think um, it up, it rose domestic right. violence because right. there's no place for that person to escape. Where could they yeah. escape to? They don't have work. Um, they can't see family. You know what I mean? You look at like where you're at, you know, an example of me in the Philippines, there's families that's living in, in their car or in, in their um, the little tricycles that they use as their business, but they're with their abuser. And I think you give a platform to give outlets to young girls to know that. And I think that's the thing that's missing too, you know, and you said in classes, um, you know, discoversation of themselves, something they didn't know that they were capable of doing, right. which right. takes their mind little yeah. by little off it. And then you could educate them yeah. into. And a lot of them see me, right. And they don't know my story. A lot of them see me as, successful or somebody that you know has a degree or whatever which is not the case you know right. really humble and able to impact them because i could i feel like i could reach them at the core the heart and really right. value to it so uh, i work at the university of the virgin islands as well in st croix and uh, you know uh, hopefully they would be embracing this project and and um really trying to reach them at that level. And um, 
how many kids can I ask? How many, um, do you know how many kids that you're working with currently? Or, right uh, now, um, when I started in St. Thomas, which I started in 2015, uh, I started with about 75. Wow, okay. 75 students that uh, were willing to learn and they wanted to embrace everything. I did not have the fundings to, to fund a lot of the projects. A lot of the projects I took out of my own pocket and I was already fighting my um, singleness, being a student, so it was overbearing. I even have credit cards that I still owe on now <laughs> from that project, you know? But yeah. it was a seed that I planted to get the results that, hey, today I could be speaking to you or speaking to Jackie and there's still hope for doors opening and the need, people listening and saying, well, yeah, this is definitely something that we can support and we can really give to um, create a difference in lives. So um, that's my hope moving forward. I have 25 right now, presently, but I'm hoping that I could, I could have a, at least set up in each community. So we have a lot of different communities and projects in the, in the Virgin Islands. And I, my goal is to have a program there, at least in each community, so we could help, um, you know, empower each child and give them the opportunity that they would not necessarily have. Right. Um, just because they're home, they may be experiencing a lot of violence. Or, yeah, or they may be experiencing a lot of uh, sadness, depression, because of mm -hmm. single, not even having a parent in the home. Some of them are living with their grandparents. So, right. But we could understand that if we could position ourselves in these communities, that the nation would change because we are somehow planting that seed that it, it would eventually grow into change and grow right. into and evolve into less less killing, less violence. You know, right. those things are necessary. We gotta get them while they're young and help right. them. Yeah. That's what's good about um, um, and what I love about what you guys are doing because the seeds is not just in one place. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I believe you're touching bases on the blueprint of what you're doing through each of the community. So the, the teaching goes far without them ever having to come to you. Am I correct? Right? Yeah. So you have kind of like ambassadors for each community. Exactly. exactly. Right, right, yeah. right. So and, um, that's what I do at the Virgin Islands too. Um, I'm one of the coordinators for this program called 4-H, where we go okay. and we should teach them about health and a healthy lifestyle. And so hopefully they embrace the business aspect of what he is is um you know the doors that she's opening in that area so that they can have more of a pull because we have to pull them where their strengths are some of them strengths are in fashion some of them are in music music some of them are right. dance. and i'm pulling them in because i'm finding people that are volunteering to teach them so i have right. a dance instructor right now she we're partnering with her and she's in music promotions and um she's been so gracious and she's willing to so we have a lot of different partners that is um, willing to extend yourselves. Right. Uh, yeah, along with Jackie and Project 6, um, it's just been the, the door for me seeing a big base in this time. Continue on that journey. Right. How did you meet Jackie? Can I ask? Just on the, like, you know, how did that happen? Yeah. Jackie, okay. People so, love see, hearing backstories, you know? So, um, Jackie, my, I have a sister. And she is a pastor's wife, the pastor okay. of Sonia's Baptist Church in St. Croix. And okay. I this organization because she too is in business. She has her business and she also has a women in business group of which I am a part of because like you know, like I said, I'm a businesswoman as well. So I, we assist each other. And she had a live stream with Jackie. And Jackie was talking about M2M gifts. And on the live stream, and I, I, I heard her heart. It was like her packages, her care packages were for women who been through domestic violence, who, you know, lose a child, had different difficulties in their life. And I'm sitting listening to her, and I'm like, she is 
at the time, I don't think she had a nonprofit. She just had these care packages. So I sent her a, a live um, message and I said, um, have you ever thought about having a nonprofit? And she, I think she smiled and she responded. But, um, that was my introduction to Jackie. Okay, okay. <laughs> Later on, my sister was like, oh, well, um, you know this lady named Jackie? She asked me to do something at the church. Um, she wanted to give care packages. And I tell her, you know, I might not be the best one, but my sister Grace has a nonprofit. And it fits right. into her mission. And, and my sister Ruth. King Shazu, she shifted Jackie on me, and it, it's been a, a, a relationship that is that is so powerful. And not only is it powerful, but it's just a door opener for me and my organization. And we are so grateful for Jackie. And and things like this um, should people like Jackie, they need some crowns because she's so worthy of what she's doing in the Virgin Islands. You know, awesome. I'm, yeah, she 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 um she grew, she was here for a while, and the thing I love about Jackie is that she was here for a while, and she saw the need to have an advocate and people against domestic violence. That she came back, and she was willing to pour into our lives and to help our local organizations. So she's helping me out in Saint Croix, and she's she's dealing with Vernon and helping Vernon in Saint Thomas. Saint Thomas has a different project. And okay. she she is uh, she's doing a lot for for our um, for the U.S. Virgin Islands. Awesome! Oh my God, that's a good story. Um, did you ever did you find it hard to get funding for any business that you were doing? Um, yeah, yeah I, I believe women of color have a difficulty, especially um, with child, as opposed to men. Mm -hmm. that pitch to raise money. Can you speak on, on that and, and how you feel and, and kind of your experience on, on, on having the difficulty to raise money? Yeah. Especially it's, for I mean, what you're doing. So much. It was so difficult for me starting with the, with the models that I, start, I said, okay, well, I'm going to get a 501c3. With the help of my attorney, we did. But we did go into the communities and we did our sponsorship letters and people were like, we don't know them. What are they doing? You know, it's a new organization. You know, we had a VI lottery that did help us, you know, but the organizations weren't willing to help. We have more of a black community. So for us, it was just, you know, it, she's an ex-black girl. She's from the islands too. She's right. U.S. Virgin Islands, that's a big thing as well. But she's from the island, so why should we help her? And you know, right. actually, that made me, I had to step back and say, Grace, your mission is good, but you don't have the fundings. Um, but, you know, the word of God says, write the vision, make it clear. So when you see it, you will, when they see it, you know, you, it will, they will run with it eventually. Right. Terry, you should wait for it. And after five years, a couple, when COVID started, you know, when COVID came into being, I was like, you know what, let me start back because I was at home. UVI sent us home and we were doing like basically the, the after school program and everything was put in a hole. And I said, I have time now so I could use some things that I learned at the university and also with my nonprofit to start back the mission and as soon as i did to start back the mission jackie came to me and right Angel, you know and um it's been i have answered your question <laughs> so, it's yeah. okay. no it's okay i mean that's what's great because a lot of women are left in a corner you know where they don't have that extensive help mm -hmm. um you know so, so a lot of funding goes to um companies where they you know, and I'll say it, they'll, they'll pitch it to white men. And most of the time doesn't even, they don't even break profit, you know, and uh, they turn away a lot of women of color, especially with child, you know, yeah. single mothers, you know, that mm -hmm. can actually turn the corner right. um, faster and better, you know, I mean, maybe at a slower pace, but, you know, it comes around because there's a difference to me in 
the businesses are being curtailed through women of color rather than just any old businesses. These businesses come from um, lifelong maybe uh, traditions, something that they've learned through their family or just helping their family out, you know? I mean, I, I think you feel in the same sense in, 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 in that, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, and um, I feel like, you know, people, un people undermine us and they don't understand. So be black, to be black and to be a single woman, it's, you know, there are so much negative things that can happen to you. Right. So, Right. Our culture too, because we tend to think, well, the majority of, we are, blacks are the majority in the, the Virgin Islands. We do have, but I would tend to believe, based on my site, that there are, uh, not, this is not on statistics or anything, but basically more blacks than white. So right. we do believe that, you know, a single, they look down on us, you know, as a single mother, or somebody that, oh, she's just trying to get some money anywhere. No, this is my last cent to make a difference in this world. And anybody that know me know that, oh, she doesn't have much, but whatever she has, she will definitely use it to make a change. And at the end of my life, I wanted to be said that, you know, I did everything that I could possibly do in my power to make a difference. And that is what so significant for me. And this comes from your family because from your parents, would you say it's a big influence in um, you keep moving forward, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, I guess with my dad is he wasn't wealthy, but he definitely had a heart to serve. You know, Which is priceless. Yeah, just the other day, heart of compassion. And, you know, a lot of people have their hang ups about God and if he's real or not. But I could tell you that I've seen my father live and walk with God. And that has just tremendously changed my life and my faith. And so I believe that I can do all things in God. Yeah, through him. Right. Through him. And, he right. does, and let me, what, last week, somebody contacted me from New York and they said, Oh, how is your father? How is he? Is he okay? I said, he's well. She, you make sure you tell him that what he told me when I was 15 years, it stayed with me for the rest of my life. And that is how I was able to live and become successful. Small seeds that we plant. And it, it, it showed me, okay, Grace, that you are doing exactly what you would be doing. But your reward might not be fine. It's, it's in somebody who said, I have been a better person because of you. I don't right. abuse because of you. I don't settle because of you, you know? And because of that, I feel like, like that is worth it to me. My purpose and my in life right. is worth it, regardless of what anybody say or think about me. Yeah, definitely. Right. Uh, I think that that is the, I think that's the, the path is you, um, plant this, like you've been saying the whole conversation is the seeds that's planted. Um, mm -hmm. There were no seeds that was planted before you. Um, and you were put in a position to, you know, harvest those seeds and give it to these young women. And that is, that is the do, you know, and it was great. Your dad was doing it for you, actually. You didn't, exactly. you didn't, you didn't even know it yet. <laughs> even though, I, don't think, I still don't think he knows because I'm not the one that is the, you know, the preacher in the family. Yeah. I'm actually the one that is, oh, don't have her pray. She can't pray. You know, <laughs> you know I'm, I don't want to say the black sheep, but I'm not the one they're going to call to pray. But I tell I you, what my dad did for me, it, and my mom too, it, it, it just um, catapulted me to who I am, the caring, compassionate person that God has made me to become. Yeah. What is, what is, okay, I want to know what, what is, what is ahead in, uh, in the upcoming months leading up to the end of the year? We're in the third quarter. Um, and what do you have in plans for the next year? Can you give me like a little bit of an insight? You know? I'm going to uh, wrap it up because I know we have an hour. So what I'm, what, we have so much plans, you know, hopefully the corona, the COVID it disappears and we can operate with freeness. I'll, I'll do, right? <laughs> what, I, what, I, I, what I am having a challenging time with is meeting with the youths online. So we've been on a lockdown for two weeks. 
So everything that we do is on Zoom right now. We are preparing for a couple different events. One of the events is called Strut the VI, which we're taking a couple of young people. Now, I don't only deal with women or girls. I deal with guys. We create a team. So I'm not biased towards women. Like I said, men get abused, women get abused. So we need to empower the youths. That's so what's beautiful because, real quick, because you could just be, and there's nothing wrong with this, you could just be all for the glory of young women and women in general. But yeah. you do know and recognize, and I think that's the power that you have in, in God and in, in your faith is that you recognize that there's all types, you know exactly. what I mean, that need, that need your help. And I have a son, and if he ever puts a hand on any woman, it will be me and him. You know, right. I've been in situations where I was slapped in front of a mother, and she said, she didn't say anything. Now, if my son think about doing that, I would, you know, I would personally lock him up, tell the police, keep him in jail. <laughs> there is absolutely no reason why anybody should hit any. A woman should not hit a man, and a man should not hit a woman. You know, and, and that is what I believe. So that's why I'm just, the, it's, it's not about just the girls, it's the guys. And, it's, and I notice that when I have it like that, the girls attract the guys and the guys want to be around. So it works out for the best. So we have a couple of projects coming up along with my Red High Business because the project that we're working on with Jackie Xavier is the Red High Business Project. Okay. We're working with her to have a homegrown lipstick brand, which we're going to start. We have the logo for it as well. She helped us with the logo and her team, she's wonderful. She has a, a big team of people that's working behind the scenes to get this done. And um, we, we are going to teach them about business and owning their own brand and marketing their own brand. And that's, that's the next big thing for us, along okay. with this conference. Um, as well, and the women's conference is called You Are Royalty, it's, and it's just empowering women. And at that conference, I'm going to launch my line, and it's called My Healing Line. It's a healing, oh. it's outfits that I'm creating that when you put it on, you're going to be transformed by the outfit. So there's one outfit that's called Joy, Peace, Hope, you know, Wealth, Prosperity. So the, the, the concept is to create a healthy, a healthy clothing line so that when I wear this dress, I'm going to feel empowered. I'm going to feel that I am strong because the name is strength, you know, and we're working on the concept to go to conference right now, and I'm getting ready to launch my, um, relaunch my clothing line. Hopefully, I'll be in New York one day, you know, in one of those big showcases. You, 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 you will, you know. Um, I, I look forward to that. You do a walk on your, your, uh, your, yes. your clothing. I'd, I'd love to Absolutely. see that. Absolutely. I'd love to see that, too. So I'm, I'm praying it will work out, and it has been working out. So I'm excited about that, and I'm excited about the films that we have a couple of films upcoming. We are teaching the youth about culture. Oh, wow and history. So um, we, we're working it into a creative mode. I don't want to give all my ideas out because I don't want anyone of course not. to, to um, you know, you know they, I mean, I would be flattered, but I would like to see it executed before. We're working on four small films around the islands where we are exposing the culture and, um, you know, bringing awareness to the young people. This is where I came from and this is where I'm going. So. We have all that in place that they are able to see, yes, we're making a change. Yes, we're making a difference. And for me, that is, that is you know, a lot of what we've been focusing on right now. Right. That's a beautiful thing. Um, I want to say uh, before, I don't know if Jackie's going to pop up soon. Um, yeah. I want to say this was, I knew this was going to be a great interview. Um, I wish we had more time when, um, and I go back to all my past guests from before because I have sometimes booked two people in one session, right? And it would be an hour and a half uh, mm -hmm. between each um, guest. And one guest wouldn't show, and me and one guest would just talk for three hours. Wow. And then that time flies so fast. It's mm -hmm. just like, like you said, how do you feel now that after you've shaken it off a little bit, you feel mm -hmm. good? 
right? Yeah, yeah. I feel like <laughs> I have a message that should be heard, you know, and I feel like somebody listening somewhere would understand that they have the power to right. away from abuse. They have the power to change their lives. And if I could do it and I'm still doing it, they can, you know. Right. And I, I don't have a college degree, so I'm doing it with God. And he's definitely... There's a lot of success name. everywhere. Success is success anywhere, you know? Yeah. You don't need that validation, you know what I mean? You're going to make it. That's the, um, that's, the, that's the great thing about success stories like this because, you know, you, you can't, you try and implement it um, by you, by maybe another person, but everybody's path is different. And that was, that's what makes yours unique and Thank solely you. yours and it can't be, you know, replicated in any way. But um, can you please... Um, let everybody know if anybody has any questions, um, something private they want to ask you, where you, could you be reached? Um, yeah, please let us know anything like that. Yeah, I can be reached. Um, I have a Facebook page. It's Grace A. King. And I um, also have a nonprofit page for my nonprofit. If you'd like to make a donation, it's um, okay. SVI um, on Facebook. And you can contact me through email. That's anata, A-N-A-T-H-A dot org, O-R-G, at, gym, at gmail.com. And those are pretty much, I do have um, Instagram as well and Twitter, all under anata and designs by Grace King. So just type my name in and i um, looking forward to re, um, relaunching my new, uh, my new clothing line. And I know it's going to be successful. And I have the youths that are helping me with sewing and creating as well. So it's going to be a tribute to them as well. And I'm excited. That's great. Um, so I want to thank you on yes. behalf of me and Chop Up Radio. and behalf of, uh, I believe, Jackie, I want to thank Jackie for this opportunity. M2M, you know, yes. Project 6. I know you guys are going to create great things. And maybe we can have a sit down, all three of us, to talk yeah. about that. And, oh, there she goes. There was the boss. <laughs> yeah. Um, this was really. This was. Gr this is great. This is great. Um, great for me too because I was like, I didn't know how to talk to people anymore. Interview them. I was like, uh, how do I do it? And then I was like, uh, I was like, it just gotta happen. You know what I mean? Wow. Yeah. yeah I cleared out the room. You know, get a little white background. But yeah. it's great. I appreciate you guys. Thank this you for awesome. having me. Thank, Thank you. For having me. I caught Thank bits and pieces, but I, I know it was great. So I can't wait to hear the whole thing. Okay. I'll see you guys later. Um, if you have any questions, um, let me know. Um, oh, quick question. I have a question. Um, are we still going to do the um, listening party for tomorrow? Being mm -hmm. that, okay. So I'll put up the stuff today. What stuff? The flyer you made? Oh, let me make a new one. Okay, okay, yeah, okay, okay. I'm gonna send okay. you a new one. That one was kind of hard to read from since. Okay, started. awesome. Okay. Yeah, let me send you a new one. And then what time do you wanna? I don't know if you use a Facebook account, but. Um, I don't. No, okay. Well, yeah, most of our audience is on Facebook. So I'm probably going to stream it through our through my page and then we're gonna like share it on all the other channels. <laughs> Please don't do that. Did you hear that? I just I heard a little bit of it. And I didn't get hurt. Um, <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> do you miss when they were that young? <laughs> it's gonna be fine. No. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. Um, yeah, I definitely do you want to do a separate like party for your channel, Woodmark? Because you have like a SoundCloud and stuff. Um, um, I don't uh, listen. I don't really care. I'm okay. a, I got the, I got the video. Um, I could chop down the audio with it too. And, and oh, you, were you recording as well? Do you have? No, I wasn't. But oh, okay. whatever you send me, I could probably extract it myself and put okay. it on Spotify. But this is great because yeah. um, I could upload this. I, I haven't had an audio. Uh, I had. A, I haven't had a video uh, uh, interview. So this is awesome. Yeah. 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 Once I okay. I um 
Grace, is there a good time for you tomorrow night? It's Thursday that we can. It's Thursday. Um, tomorrow. It's flexible because I'm at home. So just let me know so I can, I don't, I'm not on the streets driving up and down. How's yeah, yeah. I was thinking late. It seems like more people tune in when we do stuff around like 8 p.m. my time, like 9 p.m. after their kids go to bed, you know, <laughs> like, okay. especially with everyone e-learning right now too. So. Right. Yeah, so I was thinking about doing it tomorrow at nine. That would be nine year all's time. I'll send you guys a flyer. I'm just going to okay. make it a little more clear that it's a watch party on Facebook and everyone's channels and stuff on. But yeah, I'll send you the file with Mark. Okay, okay. Um, I'll be at work, but I'll still put it all through my social. Cool, thank you. I appreciate and, uh, it. I'm excited. Oh. I appreciate you guys. Thank was you so much. Was there anything I should ask? Is there anything that you guys can think of right now that you said that you definitely don't want, especially you, Grace, that you don't want on there? Yeah, no, I, um, no. What you see is what you get. Okay. No, it, it, every, everything, everything was. Yeah. Okay. Was <laughs> okay. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, yeah. I'll catch you later. All right. Bye. Thank y'all. Bye. Bye.